Hey guys, it's Katie from HeyKatie.net and today I am doing day five of Vita, which is vlogging every day in August, also known as Vlogist. Uh, today I wanted to do a video about different uh, techniques for watercolor painting. Uh, there's about a million and one things you can learn for how to be a great watercolor painter. Um, I am no, by no means an expert, um, but I have learned a few tricks over the years and I decided I wanted to share some of them with you guys today. So I've created a little uh, page in my sketchbook um, where I can show you some of the techniques that I've learned and some things that work really really well for different things you want to uh, accomplish. Uh, a lot of these are going to be really good for backgrounds or for um, just different effects that you want to achieve. So I thought I would give it a go and try and show you what I know um, and hopefully inspire you a little bit to do something of your own. So without further ado, here we go. I'm going to show you what I know. Hang tight. Okay, so the first uh, technique we're going to do is wet in wet. Uh, and this is basically where you wet the paper down before you add any paint to it. So you can get it as wet as you want. The wetter it is, the more the color will spread. Um, and the, the damper, if it's less damp, um, the color won't spread as much. But you can see it's a really great technique for like having a sort of um, a really gentle background. Um, so you can see, just adding a tiny dot, it will spread and it will not have any really sharp edges, which is really nice. Um, and you can kind of do different versions of the same color or, you know, lighter and darker colors um, to form gradients that are really gentle and subtle. Uh, and there won't be any really sharp edges, which is really nice. Um, and the other thing you can do is, after you've added your color, you can add more water and it will just dissipate even more. Um, so wet and wet is really great for really um, suffused backgrounds. Uh, and it's something that I really enjoy for fantasy paintings or I use this technique for skin tone. When I'm doing portraits, I usually use um, burnt umber for skin tone. And I do it by laying down a little bit of water and then a, the burnt umber can be really dark. Um, so I then um, diffuse it with more water using a wet and wet technique. And as you can see, you can, like I said, you can add different versions of the same color to kind of get it to spread. And you can even move the page around a little bit to get the water to, to move, which is a nice technique. Pretty, huh? The next technique that I will use is actually a wet on dry technique. And that is basically where you have dry paper, you don't wet it first, and you can use a, um, a paintbrush with a little bit of water on it to get your color nice and wet. And you can use, oops, sorry, um, a wet on dry technique and you can get really crisp lines this way. This is good for plants or for outlining things which is nice. Um, again I use this for sort of background really gentle. You can get really dark crisp lines but I tend to use um, depending on how much water you use I tend to try and get as nice and uh, suffused as I can. Um, this is great for for just like having some vines or tree branches or anything. And you can actually use this over a wash of color. So once this dried, I could do this over top of it. Um, and that would work just as well as doing it on dry paper. And it's a nice little technique to have in your back pocket. The next one is, is very similar. You can use it the same way with wet on wet or you can do wet on dry but do it a little um, differently like this. You can see I made it very dark. This is the same color I used here but over here you can see it's much darker um, and I could add lots of water to to make it really light um, but I could also use this great technique which is the paper towel technique and you can use a paper towel or a tissue or even fabric, um, washcloth, whatever you want and what it is is 
you just take an old paper towel and you press down where you want to remove some color. And this is great for like clouds or like if you were doing like a fish tank or whatever you want where you want to just kind of have this sort of fractal background. Um, and it's a really great way to remove some color um, but lighten it up a little bit in the process. And you can do the whole thing or you can do patterns. Um, that was a paper towel. This is just a tissue. And however you do it, there'll be different um, results. Um, but it's a nice way to just kind of get this pattern background and add a little texture, which is nice. Similarly, we're going to go with the saran wrap. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a nice wash of greens and yellows. And I really like this for, again, backgrounds of things um, because it adds this really cool effect. And you can do wet and wet, you can do wet and dry, whatever you want, but it works best if you have a nice, fairly thick wash. And what you do is you take a little bit of saran wrap, which is um, just the stuff you use to cover your food. And you can do it the same way as you do paper towel. You can actually scrunch it up and kind of put it on there. And wherever the saran wrap is actually touching, it's going to lighten the page. So you can leave it there until it's dry or pull it up straight away. And as you can see, it kind of makes this interesting pattern. Um, the other thing you can do is you can kind of spread it out like this and put it down sort of flat and kind of pull it around a little bit. And when it dries, you're going to have these lines and these fractal figures in there. Um, and as you can see, it will pull up the color and it will stay on the paper. So you got to be careful because it will go on to the rest of your paper if you're not careful. I don't usually use this in such a small area. I usually keep it for um, larger backgrounds. And you can make like trees and tree limbs and things like that. Or you can do a really cool grunge effect, which is always nice. But we'll leave that there while we do the rest and then I'll pick it up at the end so you can see. Um, but it actually makes this really cool effect. The next thing, let me see if I can grab this real quick. Mm. Let's see. Oh. Right, we'll do this. So the next thing is foil. Um, and this, hang on. I'm sorry, I was not prepared. Dumb, dumb, dumb. I always keep foil and saran wrap and things like that on hand for art. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to use a piece of foil and obviously we don't need a very big one and you're going to basically use a marker and you're going to draw um, or just scribble colors onto this. And I've done a video on this before to show you what you can do um, but this is a nice technique that I use quite often and this is just blocks of color from, um, these are Crayola markers. And I just basically scribble, trying not to overlap because I don't want to ruin the markers, but I scribble some colors onto the foil. And, sec, just like this. And then what you do is you add a little bit of water onto the paper, just plain water, All right? And the more water you get, the, the bigger the effect. But I try to do a very thin wash. And then you take the paper or the foil that you've used marker on and you turn it face down onto the wet spot. And again, you can do this with a very big area, which is what I usually do. And then you pull it straight up and look at that, you can see the effect is very cool. And this is really good for like sort of sci-fi art. Um, it's really good for planets and outer space. You can use a lot of black um, and purple and blue and things like that. And it just makes this really cool effect. And you can actually reuse it. You can kind of turn it a little bit, put it back down, flatten it, pull it up. And it just makes this really awesome effect. And I love that. The next effect that we've got is, um, this is the salt effect. 
So what I'll do with this, this might take a minute to show you, um, but we'll see at the end. Again, we're just going to put down a wash of color. We'll do half blue and half green. So you can see the two different kinds that I'm going to do. And the more water you use, the more this effect works. So what we're going to do is on the top half, we're just going to use some regular table salt, which is really fine grained. And we're just going to dribble it on top of the wet paint. And the wetter it is, the more this effect takes place. And you can kind of see it already. It's kind of starting to suck in the color and it's going to make these really cool um, kind of snow effects. And then, let's see if I can do this. Then I've got some, um, this is actually Himalayan <laughs> pink sea salt, um, but you can see it's much bigger. So I'm going to put those right here. You can use tweezers to set these down. That works really well. Um, or you can just sprinkle them. And again, you'll notice that this effect, it just sucks up the water in this really interesting way to create this really cool texture on top of the paint. Uh, and we'll take that out at the end. Uh, after we're done with the rest, you, you could just use your finger to kind of pull it off and you'll see that it just creates this almost snow-like effect. Let's pull this off and see if it's worked. So there we go. That's kind of a cool effect. You can see, like I said, there's lines. Um, if you do this on a bigger area and you really manipulate the, the, the uh, else who uses this technique, uh, but I'm sure other people do. But this is where you get a color and you really wet it down because you really want a dry paper but with really wet paint is I think it works the best and what I do is I just put this big doll up here and um, you can use this with ink as well but with watercolor it works just as well and then you take a spray bottle of just plain water and you hold it sideways facing whatever direction you want and you spray and you can manipulate it to go any direction that you want. Um, it will wet the rest of the paper, so it can get really, um, move really fast. So the other thing I always have on hand is paper towel, and this is the one I used earlier, just to soak up some of the extra. And again, you can use different colors. Add a little bit of blue here, right here, and then spray again, like that. And it kind of goes in whatever direction you want, but it also creates this wet on wet effect that we talked about earlier. And again, you can manipulate your paper, move it around to swirl the colors. Um, if we add a little bit of green in there, right here, and spray again. And then once again, move it and just let the colors blend together. And you can see here with the paper towel, as I told you earlier, you can pull up quite a lot of paint by doing that. Um, but the spray effect will last and it will go in whatever direction you want. And if you just do it and let it dry, then you can find um, a really cool almost splatter effect. Um, but for now I'll just leave that there. The next one is very similar to the paper towel in that we're going to actually use a sponge. And so you can create a sort of wash of whatever color you want. And this is good, again, for texture. And I did this with my son's painting that he did of the planets. And we did this for Mars and for the moon. And it's basically you set down a wash of whatever color you want. And then you take this sort of sponge that you can buy from any craft shop. I bought this one from Michael's. It comes in a set of two. And they last a long time if you remember to wash them. So you can see it's got, you know, holes in it and stuff. So you automatic texture there. And you can squeeze it into any shape that you want to make really fine um, bits or very large ones. So we're just going to take this and set it right on top. Push down for a second and pull up. And you can see it's made this almost really, really subtle um, uh, texture on there. And you can see it's pulled up quite a lot of the paint onto the sponge and again you can kind of push down harder for different effects so and if you keep using the same color over and over 
you can kind of see that you can add really cool effects and it's similar to like the salt or the foil or the saran wrap in that it just offers this cool um, texture to it and I like to add when I'm doing this I like to add other colors in because then the texture really looks cool and you can just do it from the same thing and if you actually use the same side that you used before that has pulled up some of the paint it will also mix that orange into whatever color you've put down in this case yellow so if you push that down you can see it's mixed some of that orange into it which looks even cooler and then you can kind of go all over the whole thing and look at that that's a really cool technique um, the next one one second here we go the next one is tape. I've got this painter's tape and you can buy this at any DIY store um, and it's usually for painting walls. Um, but you can use it for this just as easily and you can get really crisp, crisp lines here. So if you want to make a particular shape or just caught and cordon off an area of the painting that you don't want to get anything into you can use this tape and then it almost works like a stencil so you can paint right there add whatever you want do different areas of green soak up some of that color add a little purple for fun and kind of pull some up whatever colors you want whatever pattern you want whoops um, lots of yellow and then yeah and then all you have to do then is pull up your tape and you've got this perfect little area that you've cordoned off um, and it's very good for crisp lines that are just right there in your face. Um, I usually use this, uh, well, I don't usually, but sometimes I use this when I really want a really cool big canvas painting or big giant um, watercolor where I just want shapes. Um, and that's fun to do sometimes. So I'll just use painter's tape to paint it or to cordon it off. And it won't rip your paper. It won't pull anything up. You can see all the pencil marks are still there. The paper's intact. So that's always good. And then the final one is another texture technique. And we'll just use some yellow here. And similar to, again, paper towel or cling film, is we're actually going to use little cotton buds. Well, these are earbuds that you use. And you can basically hold it down and pull up. And you can do this. You can pull it all the way down, make bigger ones. You can roll it to make lines. Whoops, just dropped it. Um, you can do a big bunch all at once. So you have a sort of polka dot effect. It almost looks like the moon with craters. <laughs> um, you can even, you can also clean up edges this way or move paint around on the paper to give a sort of glowing effect, as you can see. Um, and you can even wet it down, grab a separate color, like orange, and dab it on. And depending on how wet the paper is, it will spread or not. You can just wet it even more and kind of re-dab. There you go. Cool. And then turn it over and pull some up again. And it's a great way of sort of blending and spreading color when you're using watercolors. There we go. And yeah, so it's a really cool way of um, creating a little bit of depth that kind of looks like the moon or a planet or any number of things. And again, you can also use it by in scrub. And look at that, you've kind of blended your colors in a really cool way Ta-da! and that's good for shading and things so that's it let's see if we can get some of this um some of the 
salt off of these. You can kind of hear it. So on the top, you can see it's kind of got this really subtle effect that almost looks like snowfall. And then on the bottom, you can see it's much bigger. You can see this sort of starburst effect and little white spots and things like that. And it just looks really cool. It's a great way of adding texture. It can look like leaves in a forest or in a jungle. It's just a really cool technique, basically. Um, I've been doing this for years and years. I have videos on YouTube back from, you know, 15 years ago of me um, painting fantasy scenes where I used a salt technique. Saran wrap, same thing. Um, saran wrap I actually really like as well. Another one will do, and I have an extra circle here, so I'll show you, is you can scrunch it up, wet it down just a little bit, pick a color. We'll go for green right here. And so I've got green on my saran wrap, and that's the other thing for trees or foliage or anything like that. You can kind of just add it in like this. Pretty cool, huh? And then you just rinse it off and then pick a different color. Um, we'll do orange. And again, just boop, boop, boop. And there, yeah, really cool. Just, it can almost be a splatter effect. It almost looks like pointillism. Um, it's just a really cool thing that you can use um, and a great way of making the most of your watercolors. So, so there you have it. Um, sorry that went a little bit longer than I thought it would, um, but hopefully you've learned something or enjoyed um, going over the same things you already knew. Uh, this is the full page of the different basically um, techniques that I've used. Again, we have the wet and wet, wet on dry, the paper towel, saran wrap, foil marker, um, salt, spray, sponge, tape, cotton bud, and more cling film um, saran wrap sort of thing. And yeah, all of these things offer you different opportunities to make your art really pop and really special. Um, and I hope that they help you to, uh, to do your best in the next time you try watercolor painting. That's it for today. Uh, I will see you tomorrow for day six of Vita. Uh, and in the meanwhile, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you um, can, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm also all over social media at HeyKatieBlog, so check me out. I'll see you guys tomorrow.